and all who are thirsty, all who are weak, come to the fountain, dip your heart in the streams of life, let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of mercy as deep cries out too deep we sing come Lord Jesus come come Lord Jesus Dip your heart in the streams of life. Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away. In the waves of His mercy as deep cries out too deep. We sing. Dip your heart in the streams of life. Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of His mercy as deep cries out to You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You 
are here working in this place I worship you oh I worship you you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my God that is who you
Created me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. And renew a right spirit within me. And renew a right spirit within me. Worship this evening. We are so glad that you're with us, and we are coming to you live tonight from our new location. And so this is our trial night. So there's been a few of the the bugs have been out, and yes, we've resolved a few of them. We have a few more to go. I'm sure. Um, I'm not sure that I'm connected, so we'll just see whether the Bluetooth is still on or not. Yeah, I can't hear it, but that's okay. Um, so yes, so welcome. And so we are going to. Uh, begin our service by lighting our altar candles as we invite the Holy Spirit to come in. And so Robert is going to be playing and singing and Harry is, going, is here to accompany him as we rise as we are able to sing Holy Ground and to invite the, al invite the altar, invite the Holy Spirit to come in to this service. And following the lighting of the altar candles, uh, Michael will be bringing our opening prayer and then we will have our opening song, which again is being uh, performed by Robert and Harry, and it is Fill My Cup, Lord. So I just invite you now to join with Robert and Harry. 
in this service tonight. Be blessed to overflow. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
And so, let me check my script here. Well, the first thing is, uh, welcome to those of you who are joining us either on Zoom or on Facebook. We are so glad that you're with us this evening as we are all gathered together, whether that is in person or virtually, to praise and to worship God. And so we are so glad that you are with us. If you know what your prayer request or your praise report is right now, don't procrastinate. Get it in so that the folks have time to get it to me on the church cell phone, which is somewhere. I have no idea where right now. I think it's in my pocket. Uh, but get it into them. And also, if you saw on the prelude screen, we invite you to gather something that represents for you the body and blood of Christ Jesus so that when we consecrate the elements here at the altar, yours will be consecrated as well. And so uh, with that, that brings us to our local announcements, which is our birthday celebration. And right there it is, through the magic of technology. So on the 4th of July, Frida and Louise had an anniversary. Can you imagine having an anniversary every year where there's fireworks? <laughs> Pretty interesting, huh? And on July 7th, Matt had a birthday. On the 10th, Katie had a birthday. On the 11th, Clint had a birthday. On the 12th, Reverend Onetta had a birthday. On the 15th, Chad and Jason had an anniversary. On the 19th, Kathy had a birthday. On the 20th, Zach and Randy celebrated an anniversary. Uh, this past week on the 21st, Kelly had a birthday. And on Friday, I believe it was, no Saturday, Frank had a birthday coming up this next week. Candy has a birthday and Jan has a birthday. And then on August 1st, David has a birthday and Jim has a birthday on the 10th. So let's join with Robert now as he leads us in singing happy birthday. And you can substitute that for happy anniversary if you want to. And that's enjoy. <laughs> So before Michael comes up to give us our offering, I'm going to feed the tie-dye pig because, you know, through the generosity of some of you folks who have been uh, watching, participating remotely, you've been sending in some of the green stuff, some of the coinage. Uh, we had someone who uh, was in the back, so I won't bother to get it. Somebody had a little house uh, bank that was packed full of coinage. So the tie-dye pig has been eating very well during this last as you can see, he or she is quite plump and are pretty ready. And so I'm going to go ahead and put in some coinage here. And Michael is going to come forward and uh, I don't know, it says offering video because I didn't have time to make it a slide. So it is what it is. So, Michael. There we go. Make the pig ready. I want oh, to see what do. Oh, yes. It's getting a balanced diet tonight, both <laughs> greenery and coinage. Yes, lots of uh, uh, fiber and wrappage in there. Yes. We're in a new space, which means that we have a new set of of, of expenses. Okay, it's going to it's, it's we're going to need about forty five hundred dollars a month, and while that's a lot less than what we had been required requiring, mm -hmm. it's still we still need to be diligent in our giving, and I'm going to ask you to please give as you as God leads you to give. Thank you. Amen. And so just to give you a little idea, you know, uh, before, yes, our rent was pretty high and our rent is much less here. But God is clearly calling us to a place of using some of those funds for ministry, uh, especially for those in need. And so um, that is where some of the funds are coming from. So um, with that, we will. Yes. And right there is our screen. And so, yes, if you would like to make a donation online, you can go to our website, rbmcc.org. And over on the right-hand side, you can click on that little orange, orange, yellow donate button, which goes directly to um, PayPal. And then um, 
or you can write a check and drop it in the mail to us at Resurrection Beach MCC 11037 Warner, W A R N E R Avenue, number 130, in Fountain Valley, California, 92708. And so I do believe that that brings us to the time in our service for our praise and worship. And so, Harry, if you want to come up and lead us in our praise and worship set, I will step out of the way. Sing unto the Lord a new song. 
Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. Oh, God is great and greatly to be praised. God is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, Lord, a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. For God is great and greatly to be praised. For God is great and greatly to be praised. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of the earth. God is great and ready to be praised. God is great and ready to be praised. I 
scripture for this evening is coming to us from Eileen, uh, who is participating remotely, and then John will be bringing uh, another one of our scriptures. So let's go ahead and uh, just let the words, God's word, meditate and wash over us as we have our first video, and then John will be bringing it live as well. Ephesians chapter 3. Verses 14 through 21, New Living Translation. Paul's Prayer for Spiritual Growth. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through the Spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all of God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now, all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus, through all generations forever and ever. Amen. John 6, verses 1 through 12, the Passion Translation. Jesus multiplies food. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the lake, Tiberus, which is also known as Lake Galilee. And a massive crowd of people followed him everywhere. They were attracted by his miracles and his healings, and they watched him perform. Jesus went up the slope of a hill and sat down with his disciples. Now it was happening, or it was approaching the time of the Jewish celebration of Passover. And there were many pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem that were in the crowd. As Jesus sat down, he looked out and he saw a massive crowd of people scrambling up the hill, for they wanted to be near him. So he turned to Philip and said, where will we buy enough food to feed all these people? Now, Jesus already knew what he was about to do, but he said this to stretch Philip's faith. Philip answered, well, I suppose if we were to give everyone only a snack, it could cost thousands of dollars to buy enough food. But just then, Andrew, Peter's brother, spoke up and said, look, there's a young person with five barley loaves and two fish. But how far would that go with such a huge crowd? Everyone sit down, Jesus said. So on to the vast grassy slope, more than 5,000 hungry people sat down. Jesus then took the barley loaves and the fish and gave thanks to God. He then gave it to the disciples to distribute to the people. Miraculously, the food multiplied, with everyone eating as much as they wanted. When everyone was satisfied, Jesus told his disciples, Now go back and gather up the pieces left over so that nothing will be wasted. The disciples filled up 12 baskets of fragments, a basket of leftovers for each disciple. Amen. Thank you so much, John, for that reading. And just for those of you who know, John agreed to do the reading earlier this week, 
and I forgot to give it to him when we got here because, you know, we were busy setting up. So 30 seconds before he went on camera, he received the scripture to read. So, yes, we have learned to be extremely flexible in the last 18 months. And spontaneous. <laughs> yes, and spontaneous, yes. Because you never know when the spirit of the Lord is going to move. So that brings us to the time for our uh, message for today. And so before we begin our message, let's go to uh, God in prayer, shall we? Holy God, first of all, we thank you so much for the opportunity that you have brought forward in this space for us to gather together to worship in person and to continue to grow the community of faith that you have called us to be. And so I just pray, dear God, that you would continue to send your Holy Spirit on each one of us gathered here in person and virtually, that you would continue to mold us into the community of faith that you have called us to be. And I, I would pray, especially right now, for this worship service, this trial run, which has had a few potholes and a few road bumps, but we are still able to glorify and to honor you, Holy God. And so I just pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts collectively would be pleasing unto you. Amen. And so, yes, regardless of whatever little bumps we have along the way, God does indeed call us to glorify and to honor his name. And so, as you saw on the prelude screen, our theme for today is fill my cup, filled to overflowing. And so our two scriptures for today each speak of being filled, of being filled fully, of being filled to overflowing. Now, Paul's uh, Ephesians 3, 14 through 21 that Eileen read for us, and our gospel passage of John 6, 1 through 12, uh, which John read, both speak of it. Uh, they both speak of it, but for different reasons and as it relates to differing things and situations, such as spiritual growth feeding our spiritual needs, making our spiritual growth overflow. And then uh, the John passage about overflowing feed, food to meet the physical needs of people. So between these two passages, they speak of overflowing our physical needs and overflowing our spiritual needs. And then, of course, there's additionally, there's the lyrics to the opening song today, which was Fill My Cup, uh, that was performed by Robert and Harry, and it speaks to us of the Samaritan woman at the well seeking physical water. And Jesus shares with her about the water of life, the water of salvation. So let's begin with the lyrics to the song. So Jesus first invites the woman to draw from Jesus's well, which by the way, never shall run dry which is filled fully and always available. Now the chorus speaks to us of quenching our spiritual thirst, our emptiness, filling our cup to overflowing, just as God sent the manna from heaven to feed his people. But at what level? So every day he provided a full cup, enough to meet all of their needs for the day. And on the sixth day, God overflowed their cup of manna so that they had enough to eat on that day and on the Sabbath day as well. And so, again, he overflowed their physical needs. And in quenching our spiritual thirst, in feeding our spiritual hunger, we are made whole because all of our needs are met. We are filled to overflowing. Now, the second verse speaks to us of how those who are seeking earthly pleasures, earthly treasures, will never match the bounty that we have, the blessings that we find when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And receiving Jesus Christ as our Savior does indeed fill our cup, the cup of our salvation to overflow. And it fills us. Uh, and as Paul describes in our Ephesians passage, God's glorious unlimited, a.k.a. overflowing resources, resources which fill our cup fully and to overflowing gives us our inner strength because of our faith in God. 
Faith in God as our loving parent, because of our faith in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, and because of the Holy Spirit who grants each of us our gifts and talents uniquely. And that is, as Paul said, parts the body of Christ, because it takes all of us working together, using the gifts and the talents that we have to meet the needs of those in the community that God is calling us to. And so now Paul continues in verse 19 as he prays for the people to experience fully the love of Christ, even though we as humans cannot fully understand that. We have to accept it and embrace it uh, in faith. And faith is in the unseen. Because if it's seen, then you don't need faith. You have proof. So Paul concludes in verses 20 to 21 that God's mighty power at work in us is it to infinitely accomplish more than we could ever imagine. And in doing so, God, through Jesus Christ, shall be glorified for all the generations forever and ever. Unlimited, uncontained. And God shall be glorified, not only fully, but to overflowing. And so then we're blessed with a cup which overflows with God's blessings through those who share God's blessings with us, which we in turn are called to share with others. You know, I can see, uh, for those of you who might be visual, uh, I can be visual at times. Sometimes I just am not thinking at all. But so I can see it as a, a cascading of God's love, a cascading of God's blessings and a cascading of the salvation uh, through Jesus Christ in a similar way to uh, a stack of glasses that are stacked up. You know, when you go to a wedding or something like that, they've got all these glasses stacked up on a pyramid and you start pouring liquid or whatever into the top one and then it flows down into each layer respectively. And when you get to the bottom, well, do you, do you stop pouring or do you keep pouring and watch those blessings flow out uh, and unstoppable to just continue to flow everywhere. Can you picture that? And you know, um, while we experience an overflowing of God's love for us, the salvation that we have through Jesus Christ and the overflowing of our spiritual gifts, when we use them to glorify not ourselves, and not our own actions, but to glorify God. We become vessels, vessels overflowing. You know, um, I'm reminded of the, the passage, even though they, this, this vessel was not fully overflowing, but remember the, the parable of the cracked vessel mm -hmm. and how every day it was filled and then it became empty and then it was filled again. And through that woman walking up and down that pathway with that vessel, the one side of the path became beautiful. The other side dried up. So when we give away that which God has blessed us with, we make this world a much better place. And so um, back to our scripture. So uh, the, uh, the John passage, which speaks of the thousands that were gathered together and came together on that grassy slope. You know, scripture does tell us in other translations that there was the uh, feeding of the 5,000. And of course, that was a patriarchal society at the time, so it was 5,000 men. That does not include all the women and children that were there as well. And so I can see very clearly that these 5,000 plus would have been overflowing on that grassy slope, probably off onto the boulders on the side, maybe into the trees. And, you know, Jesus praying over those five little loaves of barley bread and those two fishes and asking God to multiply them, to fill the needs of those gathered. And everyone getting their fill of food. And there's being so much that it overflowed into 12 baskets. And, you know, as I, I shared in the morning service this morning, uh, Picture this, when Fernando likes to cook fish, and so he gets this fish from one of the grocery stores, predominantly Hispanic, 
and they're not very big. They're a small fish. Well, I can polish that off along with rice and zucchini and some Hawaiian rolls and still have room left over for a donut. So can you imagine those little bitty fish multiplying enough to feed those 5,000 plus? And yes, I know I'm not supposed to have donuts. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do what you got to do, you know? <laughs> but so, and just, just as for us, when we do what God wants us to do, when we care for the needs of others, those whom God desires us to care for, then all are blessed to overflowing. You know, um, I was driving home from work one day this week. Well, actually, every day this week because, well, they hired, I don't know, 100 employees or something like that. And so, um, yeah, I don't know why. But anyways, so they've been offering a lot of volunteer time off. So I have been exiting stage left at 8.50 in the morning so that I could come home, get the scriptures pulled together, get everything lined up for this in-person worship, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you jump on the five in rush hour. The traffic in those eight lanes of traffic was overflowing. It was stopped. And then you add to that that there's construction going on on the five because they're trying to widen it. And, you know, I, I get on at Alicia Parkway, and the very next exit is El Toro. Well, they've got all the exits that were two and three lanes down to one. So all the traffic is overflowing from the off-ramp back onto the freeway. And, you know, that made me think a little bit while I was sitting there waiting for the traffic to start moving again, which seemed like an eternity. Um, I got to thinking about, well, you know, sometimes it, like, two o'clock in the morning when I'm having my morning coffee, you know, if I'm not really paying attention, I could very easily overflow that cup of coffee. And I'm sure we've all done it at times when we're not fully awake. And then you have this big mess all over the countertop. Well, you know, we use bounty paper towels, the quicker picker, right? But thank goodness there is no bounty picker, quicker picker upper for God's unconditional and unlimited grace and love. You know, as I shared, I think it was last week, uh, you, we cannot put God's love in chains. We have to share it with others, and we have to be able to allow others to share it with others still. And, you know, God continues to fill us to overflowing through the Holy Spirit with gifts and talents. And each one of us here and each one of you watching and participating uh, virtually have gifts and talents. And God calls upon each of us to use those gifts and talents to better the world, not for our own glorification or for our own edification, but to build the kingdom of God. And so we must do that. You know, we must not grab that imaginary role of bounty and stop whatever God has in store for us. We must embrace it. And, you know, so at the end of the, the John passage where it says that there was enough for each one of the 12 disciples, I have to wonder, even though scripture does not speak to us about this, I would hope that they did not keep that to themselves, that they found the generosity that they needed to be able to take those items, to share them with family, with friends, with neighbors. With those who are hungry because that is truly a blessing and an overflowing so god bless you and amen amen so let's see that brings us to our time of family prayer so as we come as we begin to prepare for family prayer i just invite you to uh, meditate as meg sings for us i surrender all Oh, to Jesus I surrender all. 
Could be an oopsie. I do know that we have some. I just don't remember what any of them were because I've slept since then. Oh, thank you. So let's see. How far back do we need to go? Tuesday. Okay. Well, let's see. So we did have a prayer request on Wednesday, and if we have others before then, um, y'all can call them out. Um, Jennifer Lopresto had asked for prayers for her uh, friend's son uh, who, who had COVID, and she was afraid that uh, she was frightened but putting her faith in the Lord. And also, uh, this was a prayer and a praise because uh, their friend Jason, not Jason, Jacob, who had been rushed uh, to the emergency room, uh, due to pneumonia, and they had found a lump right under his heart, and we uh, lifted him up in prayer, and I think it was yesterday she reported that the lump was gone, and that the uh, the young boy who was uh, had COVID was greatly improving in his health, and so that was a wonderful thing, and I do know that uh, Gene Kelly uh, shared a prayer request one of their family friends or family member within a 24 hour period had uh, become unconscious and was in the hospital on a ventilator and she was waiting for some kind of word to come in. Um, I don't know if I have anything else. Aaron actually sent in a praise report that he found a place to live. Uh, he moved this weekend 
And so he's still looking for a job, but he has a home. So he's not going to be homeless. So praise God for that. And let's see, do we have anything else? I don't think so. So thank you. Um, anybody have any prayer requests? Anything coming from Facebook for a prayer request? I didn't see anything. Prayers for Marge. I see um, oh, yes. she's having problems with her hip and knee and hoping that she won't have to have surgery. And I think she said something about she thought she might have to have surgery. And I know we need to be in prayer for Robert, who's has several doctor's appointments over the next couple of weeks. And one of them is with a uh, to see someone about a possible cataract surgery um, that he may be needing. Um, and Jennifer asked for prayers for a woman whose husband is missing. Oh, no. All right, and so um, Jennifer asked for prayers for a, a woman who's, whose husband is uh, missing. And so we need to be in prayer for that as well. And uh, any other prayer requests that you have, if, if they haven't come in yet or if I didn't announce them, you can send them to the text line as always, and we'll get them sent out. And so now I am so glad that <laughs> Frida is going to be here to do the, the prayer, the family prayer, because she does it so much better than I do. Well, thank God, we just come before you tonight, and we know that you have heard each and every person as they reach out to you. The praises from Aaron, the prayers for that missing husband, the worry about whether or not they're going to have, that Marge is going to have to have surgery. And as Kelly, I'm sorry, as Robert goes to doctor's appointments to find out about his health, we know that you know all of those things and all of the other things that have been requested and even the things that we don't even know that we need. And Lord, I ask that you would touch each person, that you would enfold them with your love, that you would give them hope, that you would give them the answers that they need, point them in the directions of the right people to help them. Because we know that all of those things come from you. Science and medicine is not separated from you. It is a gift from you. And Lord, I just ask that you be with us this following week. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Frida. And so that brings us to the time in our service when we will uh, gather together for communion. And so if we can go ahead and... Uh, play that song, uh, Santo, 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 as we come together for communion. <laughs> gather now 
in remembrance of all of the events that took place in that upper room with uh, Jesus when he gathered there with his disciples, with his family of choice, with the people that had been with him and followed him over the three years or so of his ministry. And so throughout that meal, he gathered there with them and he reminded them of the miracles that he had participated, that he had performed, the miracles that they had witnessed, received, participated in. And then um, at the end of the meal, he, he did some things that uh, will forever change the history of the world. And before we get to that, I just want to invite us all to join together in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so before we consume, let me consecrate, and then... Um, I will invite you to receive as I also receive. So for now, I just want to consecrate. So Holy God, we just thank you so much for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. And we pray, dear God, that you would consecrate and make for us representative of these elements to represent the body and the blood of Christ Jesus. And that in doing so, that our spiritual thirst would be quenched, that our spiritual hunger would be fed. And so I just pray, dear God, that as each one gathers together and receives the body and the blood of Christ Jesus, that you would send your holy anointing spirit on each one. In these things we pray. Amen. Amen. So at the end of the meal, Jesus reached into the center of the table and he picked up a piece of unleavened bread. He raised it toward heaven, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and he broke it. And he said, this bread represents my body which will be broken for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you eat of this bread, remember me. He passed it among them and they consumed it. And likewise, when they had consumed the bread, he reached into the center of the table and he picked up a cup of wine. We believe the cup of Elijah, a cup of wine, the very best wine that was put out in anticipation of the coming Messiah. He raised it toward heaven and he blessed it. He gave thanks for it. And then he breathed into it the very same breath that God breathed into him. And he said, this cup, represents my blood, which will be shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever they receive of this cup, remember. And he passed it among them and they consumed it. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to gather together to be at your table, at Christ's table. So I just pray, dear God, that you would send your holy anointing spirit on each one of us gathered, that you would continue to lead us to those that you would have us to reach, teach, and empower, and to hold us through Jesus Christ. In these things we pray. And so <clears throat> we've come to our closing portion of our service, and I'm going to throw another monkey wrench into things. So um, 
Yeah, I know. Shock of shocks, right? <laughs> I actually did that this morning, too. So we're going to have our closing song, and then uh, we will have our benediction, which John is going to bring. Then I will bless the food, and then we will do the closing slide before we do the outro. So I will be back to explain that. So let us now uh, have our closing song, which Harry is going to lead us in, and I don't remember exactly what it is. Um, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And so thank you so much for that. Let everything that, everything that, everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that, everything that, everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the morning, praise the evening, praise the when I'm old. Praise the laughing, praise the when grieving. Praise the season of the soul. If you could see how much your worth, your power, your mind, your endless love, then surely we would never cease to praise. Everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that. Everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the heavens, joy of angels, praise you forever and a day. Praise the earth now, joy of creation, call the nation to your praise. If you could see how much your worth, your power, your might, your endless love, then surely we would never cease to praise. Everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that, everything that, Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that, let everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Amen. Dear Lord, I want to pray that we can take tonight's message and draw inspiration as we move into the week and take whatever challenges we run into and create opportunities, transform them into opportunities that is to your pleasing. A reminder, reminder that we are disciples of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 And so as we have done every Sunday for the last several years, and especially throughout our COVID time, let us, uh, first of all, pray for all of the people who are going to be providing the food for us through the coming week and for the food itself that we're going to receive. So, Holy God, I just pray that you would send your holy anointing spirit to watch over, to protect, and to keep safe every person who is going to have anything to do with the food that we are going to receive this week, whether that is the farm workers who toil long, hard hours, the transportation workers, the processing plant workers, and now we add back the restaurant workers and especially the store workers, that you would keep each one of them safe, holy God, that they would return to their family each night safe and secure. And Anoint them also, Holy God, for continuing to provide for our needs when they 
were probably just as needy. And so because of their overflowing Holy Spirit and their overflowing care for us, not only are we blessed, but they are blessed as well. Thank you, Holy God. Amen. And so now we're going to have our thank you. Yes, there it is. And so we will have that slide and then we will have the outro. And so I am going to send you all a kiss good night. And I just invite you to stick around for another few minutes. And then you'll be able to get back to your fuzzy bunny slippers and your PJs because I know you're all wearing them anyways. <laughs> Shall go out with joy, be let forth with peace. The mountains and the hills.